Oh, Lauren, do you not see all this? See what? All this dust, man. It's nasty. You not change your furnace filter? My what? Your furnace filter. Didn't even know I had one of those. Furnace filters are integral to the overall atmosphere of your home. They should be changed every turn of the season, so four times a year. Let's go take a look at the furnace and see what the filter looks like. Oh, we is there a lot of dust up there. That's crazy. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be living in a house that's full of dust. And I'm not sure when the last time the, the filter for the furnace was changed. So what I'm going to do is take it upon myself to replace the furnace filter to get rid of all sorts of dust and allergens that come inside the house in order to make sure your house's air is nice and fresh. So we've ident identified where the furnace is and the first thing we need to do is figure out where this filter is. Usually they're on the floor and as you can see right now, we see a little bit of a cardboard um, piece that's just kind of sticking out. So what we're going to do, again, you don't need any tools. Slide the filter, which is usually made out of cardboard, and inspect it. And as you can see, it is fairly dirty. We're going to take our new filter that we bought. And you have to make sure the sizes match. So this size is 16 inches by 25 inches by 1 inch. And you can usually see on the filter, it'll tell you what size it, size it is. 1625 1 matches the one that just came out. And there's also an arrow on every single filter. This one says the airflow needs to be pushed towards the furnace. So we want to make sure the arrow is pointing in the right direction. So take your furnace filter and all you can do is slide it in until it stops. You have successfully replaced your furnace filter. You can also vacuum up the insides of your vents to make sure that any loose debris that's collected over there can be removed. I think I know what I'm going to find here. Oh, really? Come on, man. It's all crushed up. The dryer shouldn't be up against the wall like that. So we took off the damaged dryer vent hose and we're going to put a new vent hose on. But first what we're going to do is just vacuum the inside of the dryer as the lint may have built up in there. So with the vacuum, a vacuum, just fire it up. So this is our new dryer line. It's, it's an accordion kind of foil based dryer venting line. This is very much on the market and they're quite easy to install. They, they adapt to the size that you need. You can cut them. They're quite easy to cut. It's just basically foil holding kind of metal wire together to create a bit of a duct so that it's very easy to work with. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to install this on the, the, current, the lines that were there and you know make sure that we don't crush it next time. So before I put this on, the first thing I like to do is take the, the uppermost ring and just kind of stretch it all around so that um, it's all nice and ready to go. And then I like to usually start by going on the bottom and working my way to the top of the duct work. So this is a four inch pipe going on a four inch pipe. You can't do a four inch to three inch or vice versa, they gotta match. And then what you could do is you could have a, one of these, a zap strap they're called and you can strap that in order to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Again, no tools involved, which is very easy, but now look at that, right? We're getting it nice and tight. You don't need it to have it super tight just so that you know, air doesn't knock it off and you know, even moving the dryer around. So we've, we've secured one end, now I'll go down to the bottom. We're going to secure this area to the dryer. So we vacuumed up inside the dryer, we got rid of all that lint. Put it on and again, I like to work from bottom to the top. We're going to slide it on, again no tools involved. And then you're going to grab your zap strap again and you're going to secure that end of the accordion style duct work to the pipe. There you go. So we can push this dryer up against the wall now, but we want to make sure we're about six inches off the wall because we don't want to crush this pipe. That's a very big no-no because then there'll be no way for the air to properly exhaust and lint can build up, therefore causing a, a possible fire. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen in your house and that dryer should always be about six inches away. So most, most dryer lines should exhaust right outside the house. As you can see this line, this is an exterior wall. It's being sent out right outside. But sometimes lint does build up 
in the plastic grate on the exterior wall. So what you need to do is go and just kind of clean that out with a vacuum or even your hand, you can reach up in there. We want to make sure that's nice and clean to make sure all the exhaust is pushed out properly. All right, what we're going to do is actually take a look at the filter in the range hood vent. So I can tell in this house that there's been a lot of bologna and spam that's been cooked. Um, how I can tell is just this. So a vent is something that sits above most stoves, which takes all the exhaust from whatever you're cooking. And this filter is actually going to filter out all the grease. So the grease will land on here and it's going to um, just kind of build up. So again, we need to take this grease off. And by doing so, we're going to make sure that air is still exhausts the way it should and grease is caught properly. So we're going to take the filter and put it in a nice soapy water. And we're going to take a scrubbing brush and we're just going to give it a good scrub. That's all we're going to do. You could also use a rag, um, but I would let this sit in the hot water for maybe five to 10 minutes just to let it break down the grease a bit. And really you should be cleaning this filter at least once a month, if not more. After you've done that, you're going to turn your water back on and you're going to just give it a quick rinse. I'm going to leave it here for a second because what I'm going to do is grab a paper towel and I'm just going to pat it dry. So like I said, you could spend a lot of time cleaning this or you can just give it a quick clean so you break up most of the particles. So I'm happy with that. Boy, isn't that nice. Nothing excites me more than a clean range hood filter. We're going to take it back over and you're just going to pop it back in the place and voila. Most of our bathrooms, what we'll have is a simple fan that looks like this. You'll have a cover. As you can see right now, this one's on a wall surface. A lot of them that I've seen are on a ceiling, but the idea remains the same is that you're going to have a, a grill, a plastic grill that's going to look similar to this one. And then you'll have the motor on the inside. So in order to take this off, all you need to do is take your hand, two hands, grab either side and pull forward. There are two metal tabs that should snap off. So all it is, is mostly is a plastic cover with two metal wires that will snap back into a certain area into the fan base, the motor base. As you can see, this grill, this plastic grill is fairly dirty and it's, it's blocking air passage for exhausts that comes from your showers, your sinks, um, the hot air, the moisture. So we want to give this a good wipe down. We can vacuum this as well, but you can easily stick this in the sink and wash it off. Now we can take a closer look into the motor, the motor base that actually sucks the air out. As you can see, there's quite a bit of d uh, dust inside and that needs to be taken care of. And the way we would do that would be to use a small vacuum. We don't want to be sticking our hands in there just because of the electrical components. It's also a motor, so we don't, we don't want to lose our digits. And what we do is take the vacuum and just suck up as much dust as we can. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your metal tabs and you're going to compress them and you're going to feed them back into the channel. Start off with one section and then take your other tab, work on the other section all the while just making sure everything is held into place and that should all just snap back into place. And voila, you've successfully cleaned out your, your bathroom fan. And what that's going to do is going to allow all the air to be exhausted properly um, outside of the house, which is going to make your bathroom uh, more of a healthier environment and also one that would last a very long time. Now listen, just because you're deadly doesn't mean your house or your air has to be. Keep cool. <laughs> Don't laugh! Okay. 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 That's this guy. Just at it. First, first, it's hard to say that two words together. Okay, sorry. Okay. It wasn't that time.